Well, welcome everybody. Um, we're really excited to have um, a special Google Plus Hangout today. Our guest of honor is Gustav Omaha, who is joining us from the West Bank. And he, of course, oh, no. was Paul's walking guide through the West Bank. Uh, we also have lots of Out of Eden Learn educators, um, which we're very excited about. Um, I think before um, we let Bissam say a little bit about himself and how he came to be walking with Paul Zalapek, it might be nice just to go across the board and have um, the educators introduce themselves. So, Chris, you're on the left-hand side. I'm going to start with you. If you just say who you are and where you teach and what you teach, that would be great. Chris. My name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you. Um, yes, Hollis, do you want to go next? Uh, I'm Hollis Scott, and I teach in Danville, California, fifth grade, and I teach everything except science. Great, thank you. Uh, Kariaki, I think you've just joined us. Um, do you want to just say a little bit about uh, where you are? Can you hear us, Kiriaki? Uh, hello? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Do you just want to hello? say where you are and what you're uh, teaching? It's muted. Hmm. Oh, can you need to unmute it, actually? We'll come back to you, but you need to unmute your microphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, we might come back. All right. Oh, and I think Lee's trying to come on, but we'll we'll jump across. Um, Laura is off screen. Natalie, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Natalie Belli, and I'm from Marblehead, Massachusetts, and I teach English language arts and social studies. Great, great. Thank you, Laura. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Laura Hamrock. I teach sixth grade in here on. Um, Ohio, and my class is joining us live right now. Great. And I might also say that Chris and Natalie have got their students uh, with them as well. Rob? Hi, my name is uh, Rob Martin. I teach grade six social studies and language arts at the American International School of Chennai, India. Great. Um, Kiriaki, I can see your microphone is still off, so we'll need to come back to you at a later stage, I think. I'm sorry about the technical issues. Uh, you don't hear me? No? Oh, no. Okay, now we do. So if you just want to okay. introduce yourself, yeah, it's good. Hello. Okay. I'm Kiriaki Mayhew. Uh, I'm a kindergarten teacher in Athens, Greece, and uh, I have 25 young students aged from four to six. This is our first learning journey with this wonderful <laughs> group. Great. Well, very nice to have you with us. Um, and now, Vissam, if I turn to you, um, it would be great if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to walk with Paul. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. And uh, it's uh, it's great uh, to be with you. And uh, thanks for out of Eden Learn for inviting me. It's uh, I feel honored. Um, uh, well, I'm. Um, my name is Bassam Al Mohor, and I come from uh, the West Bank, uh, Palestinian territories. Um, I, uh, my background. It's nice that I see that you are teaching. Some of you, you are teaching English. My background is English literature, actually, uh, where I did my uh, 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 undergraduate studies, and then I continued in uh, political science and uh, media, journalism, computer. Uh, and then now, now I'm working in in public relations, communication, um, tourism, um, uh, all kinds of these things that to do with uh, meeting people uh, and uh, sometimes writing about that. Um, I I don't want to uh, talk much about myself, but I just want to say that it was I w I it was a, a great uh, coincidence to get to uh, work with Paul Salopek. Uh, it was an unexpected, uh, fortunate uh, thing to ha that ever happened to me, uh, actually. Uh, it was uh, a, a nice uh, chance that uh, Paul met a friend of mine in Jordan when he, when he uh, crossed uh, to Jordan uh, from Saudi Arabia. 
And there he uh, was asking about a guide in the West Bank. And uh, this friend of mine, he just uh, wrote me an email saying, hey, this guy from National Geographic, Walking Earth, would you like to walk with him? And, you know, I just like said immediately, yes. So <laughs> I uh, wrote him back uh, um, an email saying that I'm very interested, and I sent him uh, my uh, resume. And uh, a couple of weeks later, he just called me, and uh, uh, um, it was uh, it was a quick thing, uh, a one hour phone call of interview. Uh, what exactly he wants, uh, uh, what is he looking for, uh, and all of these things. And then we agreed. Okay, I'm coming to the West Bank in a couple of days. So I went to meet him at the border, and that was it. <laughs> It was so simple, actually. <laughs> that was maybe the shortest interview I had, uh, I had you know, the, or the quickest job I got. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's so so that you know, um, Shea and I actually talked pretty extensively with Bissam um, just a couple of weeks ago, and and really he has some wonderful stories to tell. But I think it would be nice if they kind of arose naturally from some of the questions that you want to ask. Um, so I think, think we'll we'll go straight into the questions, and then kind of hear some of the stories and experiences and, and ideas that Basam has to share, um, and maybe also Basam some of your current work will come out in, of that as well. So. Um, I'll just, hey, I'm just going to start. Natalie, you look like you're primed and ready to, to ask a question. Do you want to get one of your students to start us off by asking a question? All right. You're coming right now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Nice and loud. Could you hear that? No, we couldn't. I think you're going to have to repeat. Oh, come over here and nice and loud. Close. Come, have the student come closer. Yep. Why don't you drop the microphone and come right on over right here. Nope. Here we go. Now say it nice and loud. Did you learn anything new about yourself or the world around you since you have not been called? Could you just repeat it, Natalie? <laughs> did you... Did, did you learn anything new about yourself or the world around you since you have walked with Paul? It's a big question. Oh, uh, should I answer one by one, or should we? Well, I, I think that's a big question. So let's let's start with that one. Yes, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, I learned uh, I learned uh, so much about myself and about uh, and about the world around me. Uh, to work with Paul, you have to be always careful what to say and what to do, because he's all he's all eyes and ears on you. He's watching you and he's writing about you. <laughs> so, you <laughs> so you get to learn about yourself. Like, uh, I mean, he's using these kinds of vocabulary that I've never. I had to look into Google Translate and uh, and the dictionaries to check. Like, what does he mean by uh, contrarian? For example, you know, I get to learn something new about myself. <laughs> uh, in addition to the fact that my English is not that great, so I had to learn more vocabulary from him. So yes, I learned a lot about myself. I learned uh, uh, how much I can um, endure uh, from from him, from learning from him. He's uh, such a, a strong uh, man who was walking Earth. This is uh, uh, unimaginable. And the world around me, yes, I mean, I had to, even though I walked uh, the country uh, several times, uh, it's a small country, by the way, it's not really big, you know? <laughs> it's all like, uh, from north to south, it's like about uh, 120 miles, so it's not a big country. Uh, so even though it's a small country, but I had to learn about it. I had to discover new uh, places, new frontiers. Uh, new areas. Uh, I had to meet new people. I had to hear new stories, um, and I had to think uh, uh, again and again about life, uh, meanings of life, uh, and uh, and and everything around me. So it's a it's a, a mind opening. It's a, a, an eye opening about the world, about the uh, what what does it mean to live in in this life at this time. 
I think a bit later, uh, I want to make sure that we hear about your own writing, but um, let's jump to another question uh, right now. Um, Hollis, would you like to share a question from your students? How did you decide to the route or of the trip, and which and what places to take Paul to or not to take Paul to? Uh, I I I got half of the question. Could you just please repeat what exactly? How did you decide the route of the trip and what places to take Paul to or not to take Paul to? Yeah, thank you. This is a very nice question. Uh, first of all, uh, when when uh, when Paul uh, contacted me and he told me that I want to cross the country, and he said I want to visit this place and this place and this place. Uh, uh, Paul is really a great researcher. He researched everything beforehand, so he's not uh, coming to the land he doesn't know nothing about. No, he knows a lot about. And usually he has lots of connections of people around, whether journalists or whether uh, friends or whether uh, people around that he knows. So he asks, he reads, he uh, check everything, and he know he says that he told me, Sam, I want to go this place and that place and that place. He doesn't tell me how to go there. He told he tells me I want to go there. So I decide which route to take. Uh, so, for example, when we crossed from Jericho to Bethlehem, uh, and he said, "I want to meet Bedouins, and then I want to meet, I want to see a monastery." So, uh, it's uh, since it's a small country, I can just draw the the route easily. So I say, "Okay, we'll go from here. We'll take this route. We'll 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 meet these people." And then we'll we'll finish. We'll end up uh, where where uh, where it was designed to. So uh, he, me and him, we just like look at the map and say, okay, I'm interested in this. And then I'm interested in this, and then I decide the route. Is that clear? Great. That's a great answer. I think. So thank you. Um, Oh, anyway, there's a lot of you. Rob, have you got a question you'd like to share from your class? Sure. Um, a couple of my students, Aaron, Kennedy, and Mutsumi, were interested in their question was, what memories will you take away from your walk with Paul? Can you repeat the question? Sure. What memories will you take away from your walk with Paul? Oh, um, you know what I mean. The thing is, there are loads of memories um, uh, because I uh, documented uh, the whole journey with Paul. Uh, I documented uh, uh, because I'm also I work as a photographer, so I had a camera with me all the time, and I was taking photos of the whole places, the whole area that that we walked into. In addition to, I recorded. Uh, um, on GPS, the whole track, so I know exactly our steps were were. And third, um, it's the even though it's already a year uh, that passed since I walked with Paul, but it's 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 like it was yesterday uh, actually. Uh, it was so intense, even though it wasn't that long. I mean, as I as I said in the beginning, that the country is small. Uh, it's like a couple of weeks, and we crossed uh, the whole area. But uh, it was really intense because the country is very intense. Uh, there are loads of things, uh, loads of places to to see and to visit, and loads of stories. I can't really think of a one memory, um, um, but y y you see, I mean, the we used to walk the whole day. And then at night we used to stay overnight with either with people or with ho in in small hotels or something. If it's if we are stopping in a big city or something. Now with Paul, at night you don't see much of him because he's working. You know, he's on his small computer just 
typing, working. Paul, would you like to eat? Oh, let me finish first. I have, I'm on a deadline. He's always on a deadline, so I don't see much of him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we talk more when we walk than when we sit, because every time he sits, he's on his computer. You know? So uh, that's one of the nice memories. You know, sometimes I also need to relax. I want to have a distance from him. So, uh, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, actually the nicest memories were uh, at the beginning when we went to uh, say goodbye to him. He was staying in Haifa. And I took my son and we stayed with him uh, 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 two days. Uh, uh, and we traveled in the area in Haifa and Akka around, and uh, I was I had my son with me, and uh, we we enjoyed it uh, tremendously because it wasn't work; it was just we were going to the beach uh, and just enjoying the sun and the sea and the sand. Uh, that was very nice, actually, and just uh, saying goodbye. Kiriaki, would you like to ask a question from your student? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, my students are very interested about Paul, uh, very taken with uh, all the things that he does. And they would, uh, uh, all of them would like to be the guide of Paul. Yes. I, we have two icons for you, so you need to take one off. There we are. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what they would like to ask you is what are uh, the special qualifications or characteristics that a guide needs to have in order to escort Paul in this wonderful walk? Oh, thank you. That's also a nice question. Uh, the first thing, actually, you need to have uh, uh, legs of steel. <laughs> <laughs> Paul <laughs> uh, uh, is uh, is actually much stronger than a camel or a mule. Yeah, I mean he walks. I mean this is what he do for God's sake. He walks. So really he has uh, uh, legs of iron or steel or metal. You know he's like an Iron Man. You know he walks and walks and walks and. Uh, the first, uh, the first day, I mean, he was like, I'm the guy, but he was like a mile ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you need to be really fit. First of all, you need to be really fit. No smoking, no drinking, nothing, you know. Uh, you need to be fit to be able to walk. Because when he walks, he doesn't stop. I mean, you need to shout to say, hey, could you stop? And if you are shy, and as a guide, and shy, and you cannot say stop, then you will have blisters in your feet. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be, uh, to be uh, blunt, to say, hey, God, Paul, stop. I need to get relaxed, you know, I'm, I'm tired. So this is what I learned the first day, to tell him, hey, stop. I'm tired, you know. You're coming, crossing 3,000 miles, and I'm just in the first mile, for God's sake. So, second, you need to uh, you need to be uh, oriented. You need to know geography. Uh, you need to know the place. Uh, you need to know every bit of the land. Um, and nowadays, it's very easy with all the communications and the maps and the online and handheld devices and all of these things. So you know, but even though you need to get oriented, you need to you orient yourself. You need to know where is west and where is east and where is south and where is north. Direction is very important. You need to know about weather. You need to know about people. People is very important because you don't want to step on somebody else's foot. Huh? Uh, in this country where I live in, uh, yes. it's a it's a very much divided country, and there are loads of borders. There are borders that you see, and there are borders that you cannot see, and those that you cannot see is much more than what you can see. So you need to know politics, politics. You need to know geography. You need to know people, and you need to master the languages. 
of course. The language, how to talk, to communicate with people. Uh, one of the things, because you are a stranger, two strangers, one uh, an Arab and the other one is a foreigner, an American, you look suspicious. So you need to know how to navigate in this uh, complexity of land. So what do you do? One of the easiest things to do in this matter is to say hello, to learn how to talk to people first, to initiate uh, just a greeting. Hi, hello, how are you doing? Then you break up the first barrier. So how to, how to communicate with people, this is the first step towards actually having a nice walk. So these are one of the few things that you need to, to, uh, to have in order to lead the poll. And second, of course, you have to be able to, uh, to uh, um, um, how do I put it? How to be able to uh, live with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's fun to live with, but you know, um, um, he's uh, he's uh, he's somebody. He's uh, he's a character. You know, he can be really good for a um, Star Wars movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have a visual now. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if he's listening to us. Maybe he's laughing at us now. <laughs> yeah, I can't see actually if he's on yet or not. So I don't know whether he's hearing these things. You might have to answer for yourself in a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, which, which Star Wars character? Which Star Wars character would he be? I'm sorry, I, I didn't get it. Oh. Which, which Star Wars character would Paul be? Um, and, and he might chime in at some point. Because he I think he's data. <laughs> Star Trek. That's Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's the best. He he's similar to data, by the way. I mean, Star Trek, not Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely. Okay. Um. Chris, I don't know how you can top that question, but would you, you or your students like to ask a question? Yeah, uh, the girl who wanted to ask a question just stepped out, so I'll ask it for her. Um, she said, I'm in a photography class. What kind of photography and documentary work do you like to do? Um, thank you. I love photography, and I love all kinds of photography. But the most thing that is dear to me is people. I like to photograph people. Uh, I like uh, street photography, I like portraits, um, um, I like landscape, I like close-up uh, photography, but the most thing that I do right now is uh, portraits and uh, uh, street photography. Yeah, I mean, I like expressions, facial expressions. This is very, very, very dear to me. I like it. Just uh, tells a lot about people. You know what, Sam, if I could just add on this, this might be a nice moment to tell people a bit about your blog, because that features uh, some of your photography. Yeah, I mean, the first question that I, that, that I was asked, what, what did I learn from Paul, was writing. You know, I mean, I, uh, seeing this guy all the time, carrying a notebook and writing all the time, all the time, 24 hours a day, uh, it just, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, inspired me a lot, and uh, whenever I, I I tell a story to Paul, he said, "Why don't you write it?" And I say, "You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm lazy." He said, "Just try, you know, just try. Just you know, don't think of who's gonna read it. Just try it for yourself." And uh, I I used to write before, but uh, I wasn't writing. I used to write for work. You know, I'm still writing for work. You know, I have to write all of these dry things, but I, I never published really uh, stories from the from my experience, from from what I want, what I like. So uh, yeah, I mean, even before he left the country, I will I started writing pieces, and then uh, um, then uh, friends of mine in Israel in Tel Aviv, he asked me, if, uh, he asked me. Uh, to uh, write for the Hebrew press. Um, 
to write for the Israelis, the other side. And I said, yeah, why not? So uh, that was like a year ago. And I started writing one piece a month. And they take it and translate it into Hebrew and publish it in their website. And uh, that was great. You know, I felt like, wow, I mean, my work is being translated. <laughs> Uh, and uh, shared and all of these things and then uh, I uh, developed uh, I said why then why just keep the Arabic uh, version that the original one in my computer why don't I publish it so I just also uh, put uh, the, the work the pieces of writing on an Arabic blog and then we we connect these uh, 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 pieces together so if you read them in Hebrew you can just Link you can find the link to the Arabic uh, to the Arabic version, and uh, so whenever I write, I mean I, I publish lots of photos for each piece. Uh, so it's like a photo story. It's usually short pieces, but it's like a photo story. What I do, it's about places, about people, about uh, about the whole situation, the the life, the normal life that we live in. Uh, this is mainly what I write about. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say Shay just had to step out here, but she is a fluent Arabic speaker and she translated just so we could get a sense of what it was like and really it's very beautiful so we hope to be able to bring some of, uh, if Shay can translate a few bits, it might be nice to share out um, some samples um, of the son's work. Thank you. Laura, is now I'm trying to keep trying to judge when's a good time to have your students ask. They're ready you whenever you are. Laura. Whenever you're ready, they're ready. Go ahead. Okay, Alyssa. And you're going to speak really loud, okay? Right here. We're just trying to make sure she doesn't get on camera. Thank you. What was your biggest fears while you were with Paul? Could you hear her? What is your first uh, worst fear? Biggest yes. fear. Your biggest, biggest fear. fear. When you were walking with Paul. Oh, um, I mean, there was not really, um, not really, there was not one big fear walking with him because um, he's a grown up. <laughs> so I was not worried about him. Uh, I was worried about. Um, I was worried about, I don't know, um, let me put it this way, um, I was, I was, I wanted to show him, I want to show him what is meaningful in this place, and my biggest fear was misunderstanding maybe, uh, I don't want him to misunderstand what I mean by saying this story or that story, not about the country itself. Uh, the country is very easy to handle, or the people. But my conversation with him, that was important because uh, he uh, he trusts a lot his uh, guides, and he listens to them carefully, and he listens to their stories and their direction, his the, the directions. So whatever I say, I have to be careful to say it correctly. Uh, I don't want to say something that might be wrong, or uh, politically incorrect, or something like this. You know. So uh, there was, I think there was one time where I asked Paul, "Can you just please cross this word?" because it might be a problematic or something. So so this is the thing that I was worried about. Uh, of course, there are other minor things like safety and uh, food or, yeah, these things. Oh, yeah, actually I was worried once about him when he got sick. He got really sick. And I had to force him to, uh, to go back to... Uh, to town and uh, get some medication and get rest. I was worried about him, really. That was one time where I felt like the guy is really getting sick. Uh, and he wrote about it. Uh, one dispatch 
called uh, when he got pneumonia. Uh, that was that was you know we started the walk in the morning and he was just like walking slowly behind me and coughing and things and I looked at him and said are you okay he said yeah yeah and then half an hour later I said no stop let's go back he said no 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 I said no we have to go back so I, I had to be tough with him that day <laughs> uh, and uh, that was yeah I was yeah I was worried about him he actually wrote a story about it. it's called Fomacaco <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, we can That's share right. out that link for people who haven't read that. Um, and it's kind of interesting to hear what you're put, you know, now we've heard your side of the story to see how um, that matches up. Um, I just want to um, interject a question here from Tabitha O'Donnell's class in Florida, um, which maybe links on to, to the theme we're on. The question is, this is a fifth grade class, where is the craziest place you slept, I guess with Paul? Where's the craziest place you slept? <laughs> uh, um, it was uh, it was in a place uh, in a village west of Ramallah called Der Ammar, and uh, we uh, we it took us uh, it took us a while like until like late late maybe ten in the evening or something to find a place to stay. And the only place we stayed was the community center in the in the in the in a small village. And the community center was used for everything. It was used for meetings. It was used as a clinic. It was used as a, a, a classes, education, and all of these things. And there was nothing. It was cold. It was rainy, and there was nothing in it. Not even. I mean, the furniture was very very t tough and dry and. Um, and there was one bed, which was actually a, a hospital bed. And uh, Paul asked me if I want to sleep, and I said, "No, sorry, I can't sleep in a you know hospital bed. You know, I don't want to feel have nightmares at night." So uh, I slept on the uh, they have a round table, and uh, the floor. I had my sleeping bag, and it wasn't enough because the floor was very cold. So I put my uh, my sleeping bag on the on the on the round table, and I slept on the round table. And uh, Paul, he slept on the hospital bed. <laughs> well, that was a great question. Um, now, Lee, um, I know you've been trying to join in, and we can't see your picture, but maybe we can hear your audio. Um, so if if you and Oliver have a question, uh, that would be great. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Um, oh. Um, let's see. Did you? Mm, I'm trying to find. It. I'm sorry. I, let me find a good question that he hasn't already touched upon. I know a lot of the questions that uh, my students had are um, um, are are similar. Um, uh, let's see. What about that one? Okay, so after guiding uh, Paul through the West Bank, do you view your area differently? I think you may have already answered that one. Um, but do you see kind of your own environment differently now? Did you? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to see how, uh, of course. I mean, um, working with Paul and, and uh, experiencing the land in that way, uh, led me to whenever I walk the land I look for stories and I look for meanings and I look for uh, sharing those, those stories and, and experiences to the outside world. Uh, so yes, I look at it differently. Um, I look at it like as, 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 a, as an explorer, as a as uh, a journalist, as uh, as a writer, um, as uh, yes, uh, because um, working or walking with this guy who's who's all the time having a radar on his head and listening to uh, stories or looking for stories, uh, 
definitely. I mean, you will, you will, you will try to. I was envious, you know. I mean, like, how can you just like uh, uh, find these stories? But the answer was very simple: is that you learn how to how to listen to people, and um, at the same time. Um, uh, thinking of how to convey these things what you see to the outer world. So, in in order to have to, to, to do this, you need to look at the, the area, at the place, at the landscape differently, at the people differently. Um, uh, they are not your subjects anymore. Uh, you are not a journalist coming and dropping from a helicopter into a conflict zone, reporting about it, and then leave. No, you are living it. You, you live the story. And this is what makes uh, Paul's story so live, is that he lived the story. He doesn't only write about it. Uh, when you read his, um, his words, you think like, wow, I mean, the, the rich description, the rich vocabulary he's using um, is, is this guy, he lived that experience. This guy is not writing about uh, what's happening in, uh, in uh, Rwanda from New York. You know? He's, no, he lives the, 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 the situation. When he writes about the mule or the uh, escaping the conflict in, in Turkey, yes, he lived it. Um, he he lived every second of it or every step of it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Bless My you. Friend, it might be nice to get some student voices on, and then I think we'll open it um, up. Um, so, uh, Hollis, have you got a student there who would maybe like to ask another question? We have. Uh, yes, we have someone right now. We realize that, are, that there are things where you live that are difficult or might, might make you scared at times, but what is it that you love the most about where you live? Or what are the things that, in your daily life that keeps you going? Uh, so, uh, there are two th what are the things that you make that me you that makes me scared in this country? No, no, it's what do you love the most about where you live? What do you what I love most? Oh, um, I since it's a it's a small country, it's uh, a, a, uh, it's nice to 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 uh, to to know it all. So you can go uh, easily to uh, different places uh, and um, contain it in your thoughts. What I love about this place is the simplicity of it. It's uh, it's simple, uh, and because I know it very very well, to the degree that I started to love it. Um, is that clear? Am I clear? No. Let me rephrase. Um, first of all, I like its people. The people of Palestine, they are, they are um, easy to talk to. They are easy to, um, uh, to get stories from. You can just start uh, saying hello for somebody, and then he can just tell you the story of his life. You know? So for a writer, uh, or for somebody who likes to write stories, he won't have a problem finding stories. Uh, today, I was filming um, in Jenin. Uh, this is the north of the West Bank. And I came to these farmers who were just working uh, uh, on the uh, making uh, wheat. And uh, the man and his son, they just stepped, took a break, and started singing for me. They are so nice that they just like they wanted to sing something about something they, they love very easily. Just they don't know me, but just because I have uh, 
I was nice to them, and I, you know, I showed uh, interest in their work and their life. They sat for five minutes singing the man and his son to me, and I felt so nice about it, and I felt so happy about it. So yeah, I mean, the what actually, what makes a place nice or not nice is not the nature and not the geography and not the skyscrapers or the advancement of technology. Uh, it's the people. And I, I think she also asked that question. She also asked that question because we read a lot about the violence that's going on in the West Bank, and yes. <clears throat> wanted to hear the other side of it. Yeah, I mean, of course, there is so much violence, but uh, the problem is the uh, you hear about violence from a small aperture. It's like sometimes very small of a camera, you know. And this frame of the camera is so small, it's so tiny, it does see only a small part of the country. And unfortunately, a news industry focuses only on the hot things, the blood, the fire, not about the 99% of the time where it's cool and nice. You know, how to sell a story if you are a journalist? You know, you need blood, you need violence, you need action, you know, you need these things. Uh, so the eye of the camera is really small and you cannot see everything. Um, and that's why when we look at the country we say, wow, it's like burning, fire, all of it. No, um, you can find um, loads of uh, peaceful places and uh, peaceful people running around their normal life. Um, um, nobody reports about them and that's why um, somebody like Paul who tried to do slow journalism and citizen journalism uh, where he goes to non-conflict areas and where he can find loads of nice stories without a conflict. You don't need, to, you don't need a conflict to report about. You can just find lots of nice stories, interesting stories, and interesting people. Uh, people who just go their daily life as normal as, as anybody in the world. Thank you. That was a wonderful response. Thank you. Um, Natalie or Chris, um, do you have students who have questions to ask? I have one from a student here, nice and loud. <clears throat> Have you ever gotten lost with Paul? And if so, how did you find the good in being lost? Did you hear that? If I if I if I got lost with Paul? If you've ever gotten lost with Paul, and if so, how did you find the good in being lost? Oh uh, no, I mean No, I, I was never got lost because, you know, as I said again the country is so small and you cannot get lost. Uh, you do not need the map to go uh, in this country because even without a map you can just like stand on one hill and say oh I'm going there and you can just you know see the other hill and you just cross the valley and then you are on the other side and then you find your way. So it's a tiny country with loads of places the, the, the maximum you can go without seeing people is like maybe half an hour or so, you know. Uh, we don't have really big spaces like in Jordan or in Saudi Arabia or in Turkey or in other places or in the U.S. where you have like uh, uh, as far as the eye can see empty places. No, here no. I mean every stone under, they say under every stone there is somebody. No, or something. <laughs> so uh, I got lost in something else. I got lost in Kafka. I lost in the fun house. Lost in thoughts, you know. <laughs> um, you get, I mean, with this guy, yes, you get lost because he makes you think, he challenges you. He, not directly, but I mean, he asks so many questions. Not so many questions. He asks deep questions that you make you makes your head spin. You know, he wants to understand the inner minds of the people. He wants to understand the uh, 
not only the incidents or the geography or the area, no, he wants to know really how people think. And you say like, wow, this guy is really, uh, he, he, he wants to know deeply. He wants to know uh, and he's serious about it. I worked with journalists before. Uh, where they like they ask you the question and sometimes they even don't listen to the answer you know because they have an answer in their mind um, while Paul no he he asks a question even though sometimes it's a simple question but you need to be clever how to answer his, his questions so yes you, he makes you lost he makes you get lost so sometimes in thinking in in finding answers not finding places I hope I answered the question correctly. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> um, just before, Chris, we turn to you, I, I just want to include somebody else in the conversation who's written in a, um, a question. So this is from Stephen Vilka. After watching Paul experience the region through his own unique viewpoint, did you find new subjects for your photography that you wouldn't otherwise have focused on? Um, yeah, uh, interesting question. Um, uh, you know, I mean, he he's also interested in with with Paul. Um, his photography is unique, even though he's he carries a very tiny tiny camera. Uh, but uh, and I'm carrying a, a rocket camera, you know. But uh, <laughs> uh, his his subject his. Um, intensity of um, of things in his photographs are so rich and so powerful uh, the angles he takes uh, of his subjects of his of the things that he he uh, he likes to photograph are very unique um, uh, you are working with Paul and you take a photo and then Next time you just see that he published a photo that oh my gosh I didn't see that uh, the way he he takes photos are very unique uh, great uh, another thing is uh, the captions for God I mean this is uh, this is uh, these couple of words that he used to describe the photos are uh, impossible you know <laughs> I uh, um, I learned from him not only how to what angle to take and how to better reflect the scene that you are seeing but also how to describe it in words of course I, I'm not as good as him but at least uh, I, I try to uh, I, I try to um, uh, to to describe the, 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 the scene in, in really great words uh, I'm not I'm not as good as him, but uh, I'm trying to learn how to do it. You know, um, uh, so yeah, uh, you, you learn subjects, you learn angles, you learn uh, what and how to describe the photos because the the image is very powerful, but also the the caption is even stronger sometimes than the image. I just want to interject because, as I said earlier, uh, Shea has read your work, and uh, rumor has it that you're actually an excellent writer. I myself haven't read the Arabic, but uh, I think I think just for, for the record, I think for Sam is being unduly modest here. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Liz. That's uh, very kind of you to say. Um, Chris, do you do, any student questions at your end? You can hear the bell ringing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, do you want to say but something? I do have a question that they would have asked. Um, should I ask? Hmm. That'd be great. Okay. So um, the question was, the media coverage of the West Bank that we see on TV here uh, seems to say that religions just don't get along at all. And the student asked, in your community, do different religions get along better than what we think they do? Um, uh, yes, I mean this is this is. Um, I don't want to say that it's a conflict uh, on religion in this area. 
Uh, yes, there is the three monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Um, uh, but the, the conflict is more political than religious. These three religions, they left together uh, hundreds of years before, and there was no conflict. Uh, it was okay. We, the Christians and Muslims and Jews, they lived in Palestine for centuries. Uh, but then politics came and the divide came, not because of religions, because of other political um, um, goals. Uh, so I won't call it a religious. I won't call it a religious fight. I won't call it a religious war. Actually, uh, religious wars have vanished since the. Uh, I don't know, Crusaders' time or before that, like a, a thousand years ago. And nowadays there is no, it's different. So, um, so I won't name it that. And people here, I mean, my neighbors around me here are Christian, and not only Christian, different sects of, of Christians, and also we have also different kinds of Muslims. Because of the conflict between the Palestinians and Israelis, and then there is Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, then there is a, a problem between the religion. Uh, it, it looks like a problem between religions, but it's not. I have lots of Jewish friends. I have lots of Christian friends or Muslim friends. So um, it's not a question of religion. On the contrary. Um, People uh, live. I I lived in Jerusalem, where we we lived all together in one building, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and there was no problem at all. We were just all humans, I guess. Uh, Laura, um, what, did you have another question from your class? And I think you your classes have shifted, if I'm correct, because of the timing of this. Um, we do. We have a new group in now. My class has been really concerned about um, the, you know, they read the bang, um, the story called Bang, and we've been concerned about the safety issue and how safe Paul feels as he travels through these areas that are so war torn. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was uh, an unexpected bang. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said. Uh, you step sometimes on conflict zones, and uh, we were traveling in this one village where there is clashes most of the time between Palestinians and Israeli soldiers. And uh, usually these clashes happen on Fridays. Usually every week after Friday prayer, the Palestinians go to demonstrate because of the problem of land issues and conflict and all of these things. Now we were traveling in that area on a Wednesday. So it wasn't Friday, so it wasn't expected. And when we first came to the village, uh, there was no no problem at all. We entered the village and there was no, no problem. Now when we got out, we were surprised to see the Palestinian uh, uh, demonstrators and the Israeli soldiers are clashing. Uh, clashing, you know, and uh, so we were surprised. So we had to do a long detour in order to avoid being hit by uh, by rubber bullets and 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 gas uh, uh, and all of these things. Uh, so safety, uh, as I said, back to the question that how I decide the route is, of course, I take into consideration the safety issue. How to what is the best route and to avoid conflict zones, to avoid uh, friction, to avoid tense areas, uh, because of so much borders, as I said. So you have to sometimes walk in a thin line, and that area was a thin line, you know. Uh, so we had to, fortunately, we avoided that, and I only had a dust of a bullet. So, we were safe. Thank you. I, I just want to mention that Paul has um, been watching. Um, he has been trying to, to get on the Hangout, but actually I think that's because we're a full house. Um, 
So I'm going to read a message out to you from Paul. It says, Great to see you, Bussar. Sorry I'm late. You made the walk through the Palestinian territories a joy through your humor. You managed to find a levity even in moments of deep sadness, which is a true gift. And then he apologizes he can't come on. But um, I, I think we've seen a little of your humor coming out today, actually, in the Hangout, if you don't mind me saying. So um, yeah, I, I, that's, it's nice to know that Paul is um, watching and I think you know sharing some of his sentiments and deep affection that he holds for you. So. Yeah, actually, uh, back to the question about my biggest fear. When I first, you know, met this guy and I said my first, my biggest fear would be like, does this guy laugh or not? <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, and what's, what's the answer? <laughs> no, the first day, the second day, uh, it was okay. I mean, I didn't, I saw him normal. But I was worried, like, uh, is he going to be fun? Is he have, does he have a sense of humor? The third day, I got him laughing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then it was okay. My fears were just vanished, you know. <laughs> okay. You know, we've only got a few more minutes, so I'm just going to throw it out there. If anybody there um, on, you know, amongst our guests has a question they'd just really like to get in there. Please go ahead. Oh. Have you ever wanted to stop walking and just go back home? Have you ever wanted yeah. to just stop walking and just go back home? Um, um. Yeah, I mean the th the, fir the second the second or the third day, as I said, because of my blisters, and because he was so strong and tough, and he was walking in front of me, and I was just like screaming from pain, and I can't say it because you know he's I don't want to lose my job. So yeah, I mean I felt like oh my gosh, I want to go home. Yeah, but then I just like. Uh, what I did is just like I just said, I don't care. I just called him, hey, stop. I have blisters. <laughs> and uh, he was he was he was really kind. He uh, um, he gave me some medication and he took care of my feet. I mean, uh, just like verbally. Thank you. Could, could we ask one more quick question? Sure. Sure. What messages would you like us to take away from your journey? And tell them how old you are. Um, we're 11 years old. Around. Oh, what messages? I think the the uh, the message the one message I would say is that uh, there are loads of stories in the world out there. Just maybe out outside your your this is door. Where, this is where uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, uh, I said there are loads of untold stories outside outside your door sometimes, waiting for somebody to pick them up. So go and hunt for them. Right. Well, I think um, our time is up. I, I, Sam, we may invite you back another time because I feel like you have a lot more to share with us. Um, but on behalf of everybody, the whole community, I just really want to thank you for taking the time, for sharing your stories, for really being very generous um, because I think we have a lot to learn from from you in your own right as, as well as, of course, from Paul. So. Thank you so much. And, uh, thank you for everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you very you much, for, educators, too. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, students. That was a good reminder. Of course, you've been a bit invisible, but 
without out without the students and the young people, out of ease and learn would be nothing. So thank you, each and every one, for all the work that you do and and the stories that you share. So thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 B